What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie2988, coming at you live once again through the power of the internet. And my house is all spoopy right now, well, with the uh, Halloween stuff and decorations. House looks really cool. I'm shooting this on my phone, not done this in a while, but hey, I got something cool in the mail today that I wanted to share with you guys. I paid for this. This is not paid promotion. This is a review video, a tech review. I haven't done one like this in a while, uh, but let me show you what I got. Now, you might have seen these on other retro gaming channels. This is the Arcade 1-Up at Home Arcade. I got the Deluxe Edition. This is 12 games included. Um, so this one's a little more expensive than the rest of them. I think the normal ones are like $2.99. This one is $3.99. And it's a very miniature version of the actual arcade machine. Uh, and this one included the, the risers. So I, I, I believe these stand about four foot tall. The riser adds about a foot to it. And this one has a buttload of games. Asteroids, Centipede, uh, what Missile Command, Lunar Lander, Crystal Castles. I bought it for Crystal Castles. Tempest, Millipede, all kinds of great stuff. So the problem is, here it's a com real bitch to put these together. But the good news is I'm not going to. Chat is. All right, here we go. Here's our... Our console, uh, basically player one, player two buttons. We got on and off. We got a volume control. We got an A, B, and C, and then we got the spin dial. No joystick on this one, but none of the games on this list need a joystick, so that makes sense. And then, then here is the side of the cabinet. I think one side looks like Asteroids, the other side is Centipede. So you have like an old school feel, an old school look. Yeah, I love the fact that this has the original. Uh, artwork for the, the arcade cabinet. I couldn't be happier about that. 17-inch monitor. We'll break that out in a second, though. But yeah, very cool setup so far. I, I, I can't wait to see the way it plays. So here's what the inside of it looks like, and it's fairly simple. There's your 17-inch monitor with a basic proprietary ribbon cable that goes to the controllers, and I guess there on the back of the monitor, that's the actual CPU that emulates the games. That is completely insane. Very very simple build, just a little time consuming. Surprised at how small this thing is, but we're almost done. For those of you who enjoy this kind of thing, here we go. Everybody loves a nice, slow peel off a screen. Oh, there we go. I've heard that uh, for a lot of people, they've had a little bit of dust between the glass and the monitor, and some people have had to crack theirs open. I really don't see any for this one. And I'm surprised at how short this thing is. I'm so glad they sent the riser with this premium edition. Here we go, fully set up and in its position. Now, we still don't have it on its riser, so it's a little shorter than it would be. But let me show you how short we're talking. I'm 5'11". So, yeah, you're definitely not going to be standing up playing this. I even think with the riser, which is supposed to raise it up a foot, you're still... Definitely not going to be standing up to play this game. So uh, be prepared to sit down. Here we go. Booting it up. Hi. Fairly simple um, control scheme here. Yay. We've got the trackball for the handful of trackball games. Not so bad. Uh, one or two player buttons, though, I think in this one, there's not much for two player games. I actually tweeted them and asked. So for Tempest, you have your little spinner. Um, and then you have your controllers A, B, C, D, and E um, for a variety of different games. And on this system right here, we have Asteroids, um, Asteroids Deluxe, Liberator, Crystal Castles, Millipede, Lunar Lander, Centipede, Missile Command, Tempest, Gravitar, Quantum, oh, what is that? Major Havoc, Crystal Castles, I think, is still my favorite. So let's get right into it. Whoa, okay, hitting player one is adding credits. Hitting jump starts. All right, sound is very, very good. I, boy, this sounds exactly like the arcade. There's three different volume settings. Oh, man. There's definitely, now this trackball definitely does not free flow. I'm kind of disappointed by that. It's definitely got some tightness to it, but maybe that's what people prefer. I'm not sure. Here's another classic. Tempest. Oh, I love this one as well. Pretty dark. Okay, I'm gonna have to set down. I'm gonna have to set down the controls to play this. 
I have to say, it's not a perfect arcade experience. Um, the controls are fairly different from the controls that I would play with as a kid. The button is definitely way clickier than I would expect. Uh, the little the little turn wheel here is definitely very clicky, and the re the trackball has some resistance to it. But I think all of those are good things. Like, they almost feel like improvements. And the game is certainly emulated. Um, this is not an arcade perfect reproduction. But for the price, I gotta say, 12 games in one, all in one system. It's hard to complain. One more design thing I don't like. Here's where the speaker is. And I would have expected it to be up here, somewhere else, uh, but instead they put it here. I feel like with these drill holes here, it doesn't look very good. And then on top of that, obviously you do not want to spill anything on this, so no setting your drinks on this thing, which I think people are going to tend to want to do, especially, you know, when you're playing all night. But let's put a table here to the side. It'll be fine. Now, it's my understanding that this uh, hardware is proprietary. Um, and I don't know if there's even a way to get into the system or to be able to hack it or patch it or anything like that. People may be able to figure out how to add new games to it. I wouldn't buy one based on that, though. I would buy one to play it as it comes. As it comes, I'm kind of enjoying it. Feels good to play Asteroids in my own home. So as a retro video game machine, it's decent. As a collector's item, it's very, very cool. I don't know a lot of people who has this kind of room in their home. I don't know a lot of people who would want to have this in their home, but it's cheaper, way more affordable. It has a lot more variety than a uh, than the actual arcade machines, and it doesn't run as hot. So I think this might be the way to go. But then you have stuff like this, the little Super Nintendo Classic with all of the Super Nintendo games under the NES Classic. They're available for like 50 or 60 bucks. They take up way less space. They hook up to your main television. You can play them right then and there. And then if you're really looking to budget this kind of thing, um, and you're not interested in having a, a classic arcade style thing, you know, you just pick up a Raspberry Pi machine, uh, hook that up to your television. It may not be exactly legal, but it sure is cost efficient because my Raspberry Pi fully loaded with 3,500 games, only run me about 100 bucks. But I have to say, that is quite the looking piece, uh, why quite the conversation starter. A lot of people are going to really, really enjoy having this in their home. I'm definitely going to enjoy having it in my home. Uh, I'm going to play some more. I'll be right back. After having this unit um, in the house for almost 24 hours now, having played it pretty extensively and had a few friends play it as well, I have to say, I do love the buttons. The trackball at first was pretty tight. Um, it's now gotten a fair amount looser which makes it a lot better for Crystal Castles. It's still not exactly free-floating, which is kind of frustrating. I do feel they cheaped out a little bit here. Where they really cheaped out, and I almost feel like it's broken, is, is this spinner. The spinner sticks, and it clicks, and it doesn't click evenly. And so my first initial response was, uh, it, this is just how they designed it. They wanted it to be a little clicky for like feedback. But then when you try to play a game like Tempest, it's almost unusable. And this this is so bad. I'm actually going to send this video to the folks at RK1UP to see if they're going to replace this. Because if you lift up on it, it does free it does spin a little better. But when there's a little, even just a tiny bit of pressure, look at that. It's literally, it's broken. I don't know if they're all like this. But this one definitely does not work. You can't play a game like Tempest using a broken wheel like this with no free spin. Those, those games are designed to have a level of free spin to them. And unless you lift up, you literally get no free spin. I'm really frustrated about that. This review shows you why it's important to go ahead and test the, the item extensively because my first impressions of the device were really, really good. Now that I've discovered that my spin wheel doesn't work very well and it's kind of broken, ooh, I'm frustrated. But provided that my unit worked perfectly, we have to stop and ask ourselves the question, who is this product for? And I, I, I don't really know if you think about it. If you look at the competition and the other alternatives, I don't know who should be buying this. You're getting 12 games with a decent controller and a nice arcade cabinet for about 400 bucks, but it doesn't connect to the internet. There's no Wi-Fi capabilities. You can't patch the thing. You can't buy or add more games. It's exactly what you bought in the store as far as I know forever. I don't think there's even a way to plug it into USB. It takes up a tremendous amount of space, and there are tons of plug-and-play devices for your television that take, like, no space whatsoever. Some of them are expandable. Some of them have a lot more games. Some of them have higher-quality games as well. Um, so I think those are going to be options for most people. 
If you're willing to go the emulation route, then you can get a Raspberry Pi and connect that to your television or build it into a handheld or build it into an arcade cabinet. Uh, and then there's plenty of uh, companies that just do massive full-sized arcade machines that are ready for emulation that come with the games preloaded. So, I mean, there's a lot of really good alternatives out there. And this one's not even that affordable of one. What these do have going for them is the fact that they look like an arcade machine and they feel like an arcade machine and that is really cool. They use the original art and the, the games themselves are really well emulated uh, and it feels like you bought a piece of your childhood. It feels like you bought an arcade machine for only about 400 bucks. It looks great in your home. So if you have a lot of extra money and you want to have just an arcade machine, a piece of your childhood repurchased somewhere in your house and you have the space for it, it's not a bad purchase. I just don't know that it's a quality product because mine shipped broke. Tell you what I'm gonna do though. I, I'm gonna contact the company to see if I can get my machine fixed and I hopefully uh, uh, that'll work. I'll do a follow-up video based on that and I'll probably purchase another one of the arcade machines to compare and contrast. I'll get one with the joystick, maybe the Rampage machine, maybe the Street Fighter one, just depending whether or not there's an in enough interest in this video gets enough views. And I'll go out and do that. We'll do the follow-up video if you like this video. It's been a while since I've done an unboxing or a tech review or a, a game review or something like that. I haven't done one in a while and I really enjoyed doing it. It's now all comes down to you. I need you to let me know if you enjoyed this video in the comments section below. While you're down there, drop a like on this video. If you enjoy my channel, hit subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, hit that notification bell so you can be one of the very first people to watch a video as soon as it goes live. The quicker you watch a video and the quicker you interact with it and the more videos you watch, the better these videos do. And it tells me that I should be making more videos like it. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. I love you very much, and I'll speak with you again soon.